What's up, Baylor family? Welcome into Inside Baylor Sports, the official daily podcast of Baylor Athletics. It's Friday, August 23rd, and today we're going to wrap up our position by position preview of the 2024 Baylor football team by talking about the defensive backs. This includes the star position, both deep safety positions, as well as the cornerbacks. It's gonna be a little fast and furious because we have a lot of names to get through in this final episode of previewing the team. But Grayson, might as well get started because we, we don't have a lot of time to get through all of them. So um, let's start closer to the line of scrimmage, uh, the star position. It's kind of the position, if you're not familiar with it, that Jalen Petrie played back in 2021. So if you remember all the plays that he made uh, all over the field, it's kind of a linebacker hybrid safety, um, rushing the passer, just doing a lot of variety of things. That's what this position is supposed to look like for Dave Aranda's or his scheme. Um, Grayson, I think this is kind of the X factor um, for a rush defense um, for this particular team to overcome some of the challenges they had last year in a variety of different reasons. So what's your overall thoughts on the position before we get into the names that are playing there? It's such an important position. And I think last year you found out that just because you have a guy who can get after the quarterback and potentially create havoc doesn't mean that he can be a guy that can't cover it all. You have to be able to do both. And last year, not to Bryson Jackson's fault, really, but he had to play a position that he hadn't played before and then was asked to excel at that. And it ended up being that teams really attack that position. And then you were asking, you know, Corey Gordon to come in and you were kind of rotating guys in until you finally got Carl Williams in there. Uh, and Carl played well uh, last year at that position, but he was still a true freshman. So they yeah. really, that was a position that was probably uh, in my eyes, the biggest weakness on the defense last year. And it really exposed them because you, this position does so much from a coverage standpoint, but also being disruptive. Like you got to be able to get after the quarterback. You got to be able to create tackles for loss, create turnovers. Um, they did not have that last year at all. The year before they had Al Walcott who did some of that, but it was nowhere near the level of Petrie. Right. And so um, they're trying to get back to that, I think. And I actually think this might be a little bit more of a committee approach again this season, but I think it's directly two guys. Yeah, it is. And I think with the the strength and weaknesses of these two guys versus the two guys that did it last year that you mentioned, Bryson Jackson, Corey Gordon, just different overall players. I mean, you had Bryson Jackson moving out of the linebacker position to come play star. Um, Bryson was always a guy kind of without a position, but he could get to the quarterback. He was pretty physical, but he just never really had the opportunity to fall into a groove. So then they bring in this year Kendrick Simpkins from Western Kentucky, a uh, redshirt senior, and just highly productive at, around the line of scrimmage, but also played plenty of deep safety. So his coverage ability, understanding what's going on in the back end of the defense, um, is much different than what Bryson Jackson had. Even Corey Gordon, and Corey Gordon's experience there as a uh, redshirt freshman last year was limited at most. Very athletic, but Kendrick brings a variety of athletic ability, production, experience, and I think that if you want someone that is going to be similar to Jalen Petrie around the line of scrimmage, he's going to give you that best chance. Um, obviously has some, you know, I would say overall question marks in coverage, but that's why you have a guy like Carl Williams backing him up. But overall thoughts on Kendrick and what he brings to this particular team. Kendrick was a huge addition in my eyes. And uh, I think the biggest thing is experience. And then like you mentioned, what he brings closer to line of scrimmage. Um, he gives them more upside as far as pass rushing from different levels. Um, I think that was a huge issue for Bryson Jackson last year. He never was comfortable blitzing uh, from the second level at yeah. all. And so his physicality almost went out the door. Our very own Travis Roder, I think he posted a clip. It might've been the Texas state game where you see him one-on-one -on -one with a running back and it's a play where you got to blow up the running back and get into the, and hit the quarterback. And he just gets checked so easily and tries to jump and tip a pass. And that's not what you want. You need a guy that's playing with his hair on fire that understands blitzing uh, from the second level, understands coverage and also understands just playmaking, how to make plays, uh, whether it's in space or when the ball's in the air. And I think Kendrick gives them some of that. Uh, last year at Western Kentucky, he had 52 tackles, 11 for loss, seven and a half sacks, eight quarterback hurries, uh, and four forced fumbles. So 
a lot there. He didn't do a ton in coverage. Like we mentioned, the interceptions aren't really there, but the physicality and the wrecking havoc in the backfield absolutely is. And it's something that was lacking from a year ago. Yeah, I think with Kidrick, um, he's not going to go out and guard receivers like you would uh, maybe see Jalen Petrie do. Um, you're going to get into situations uh, schematically with the offense that you pull him off the field. And it's not necessarily a bad thing because you bring in Carl Williams, um, who started as a quarterback. Uh, you mentioned he played in into the um, star room last year a little bit and is now splitting time, um, kind of a starter as a safety right now, as, as far as we know, before we actually get the official depth chart in the first game gets here. Uh, but Carl really offsets what Kendrick is bringing to the table. And mentioned again from last year, both of those guys had their different strengths, but I think these two really complement each other really well. And I think in a lot of ways, Carl could potentially be your starter at this at the star position um but you want him in the back end of the defense as well rotating back there with with Devin Lemire um and DJ Coleman and all those guys so I think if Carl in third and long situations Carl's probably your guy unless you're just wanting Kendrick to rush the passer we don't really know what they're going to do with the rest of the defense up front um but what about Carl have we learned this offseason that just makes this move make more sense I think just the ability and coverage is something that they don't really, I think, have anyone else like that in the safety group um, at this time, which is a little unfortunate, but it, it just kind of is what it is as far as one-on-one -on -one ability. Um, yeah. If you ask a lot of these guys to go one-on-one -on -one with receivers, I think at times, if you're not getting pressure, they're going to have some issues. Um, and so I think Carl really fills that role nicely. Um, I think with Kendrick, I just wanted to mention one more thing on the fact that I think this shows you just how much Dave Randa values blitzing from the second level um, mm -hmm. and how he cares about that far more um, than just coverage. Like there needs to be a level of physicality and there needs to be a level of wrecking havoc uh, from this position, which is why Kendrick, I believe, will start there, uh, be your starter there. Um, but I yeah. do think what Carl brings to the table is if a team is just attacking that which could happen, you know, it could happen if you're attacking yeah. that with the slot receiver, um, then you have the ability to slide Carl up um, to play star. And then you feel pretty good about your safeties because at least you have veteran presences back there as well. So yes, they complement each other. Well, I think Kendrick Simpkins though um, is a guy that I'm very interested to see because what he did at Western Kentucky, if that translates um, he's going to have a huge year because this star position gets put into positions to succeed very often. Follow Baylor Plus and Sikkim 365 today on X, Instagram, and Facebook, and sign up for the new premium content bundle for the monthly price of $17.99, a $5 per month savings. Baylor fans can access the full offerings that both platforms offer. The long form storytelling, video, and all access, behind the scenes content of Baylor Plus, and the premium news, analysis, and forums of Sikkim 365. Sign up today on either platform. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast, leave a review, and tell your friends about us. Catch Colt and I on Inside Baylor Sports every weekday. You can also watch the video version free over at BaylorPlus.com or the official Baylor Athletics YouTube channel. Yeah, and I would say, too, I think when Kendrick's on the field and being asked to be in coverage, he's going to be guarding guys, covering guys who he's fully capable of covering. You talk about tight ends, running backs. There are going to be times where he's in the slot, uh, situationally covering a receiver but a lot of times they're going to set him up in positions that he's going to be successful and I don't think that you couldn't really rely on that last year to say hey let's leave our star on the field for three downs and without having to sub and then even your backup at times who is more of a true safety is going to going to struggle whereas Carl I think if sorry if, I think with Carl he started as a corner and has so many natural attributes as a corner that he could potentially be in that cornerback room still um, you trust him more lining up against receivers in the star position. Right. I, I think that that is kind of a, a big part of it. You couldn't, there, there was no one that you could put on the field last year to where you didn't have a very big negative hole in their game. Like Corey Gordon as a blitzer and a guy stopping the run, just, it was not there. And then Bryson Jackson in coverage, just, it, it was not there. And so I think Kendrick definitely, he hovers more towards the middle. 
like he will be able to cover at times. And if you drop him into zone, I think he'll feel pretty comfortable doing that. Um, it's more so just the long speed and, and that kind of athleticism, I, I think is something that he is lacking a little bit. Yeah. And, and Kendrick, if you looked at, at WKU, he played prior to playing more at the line of scrimmage in that box. He did play some free safety, strong safety in his career there. So he, he's comfortable uh, playing a little bit deeper. Um, but what they recruited him to do is play close to the line of scrimmage. So I really like the mesh between these two. And it sets up what's going to be capable at the safety position. Um, and he's going to be rotating there. But the other two guys to really keep an eye on are Devin Bobby um, and Devin Lemire. And then a third to go along with those three would be DJ Coleman as a sophomore. Ultra athletic is going to make a name for himself. It, he just might not be as much this year unless there are in, injuries. So we'll focus on the guys ahead of him for now. Um, but Carl as a potential starting safety, um, along with Devin Bobby is kind of what we've gathered right now, now, but I don't think that you can necessarily discount Devin Lemire coming off of an injury last year, um, bad dislocated elbow early in the season that I think really hampered him, uh, throughout and that's two years in a row where he's dealt with injuries, which is a bit of a concern, but overall, I think that you have a floor with this group that you can say, this is what we got. Um, and you know their strengths and weaknesses. And I think the coaching staff almost values that because they know what can we do, what can we not do with this group. And overall, I think it's a pretty, it's a pretty good group with Carl kind of being the high potential of the three. I think Carl Williams is the only guy out of this safety group that you're probably not going to see come off the field very often at all. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be on the field a ton, going to play kind of all around. Um, and so it's nice to have these other pieces that have a lot of experience. And so Kendrick yeah. Simpkins, very experienced, has played a lot of football. Like you feel like you can trust him. Uh, Devin Bobby, been in the system a while now. This is year number three. You feel like this is the year yeah. he could take a step forward and be more consistent. And then Devin Lemire, I mean, shoot, going into last year, I felt like he might be their best defensive player because he had such a good 2022 season, uh, forced multiple turnovers, was a guy that was just very opportunistic when he was around the football. Um, but the common thread for him, and I believe Devin Bobby as well, was the fact that once there was no pass rush, it was really hard and it always is going to be really hard for a secondary to have to hold up in coverage for a really long time. You're going to look bad at times. It, it just is going to happen if you're not getting any pressure. And so that's an area that Dave Rand is trying to fix. And ultimately I think that is the area that will probably make the biggest difference for this safety group is if they're actually able to get pressure. Cause then I think you can see the, at the major positive traits from a guy like Devin Lemire really shine. And so I'm curious to see kind of how that uh, plays itself out. DJ Coleman, really good athlete. Curious to see if he's gotten kind of better in the all around phases of the game um, was still very green last year as a freshman. And so now I think this year, can he take a step forward and really emerge as that fourth option at safety and provide some depth that will be a big deal. Yeah, I'm going to stick on Devin Lemire for a second. And um, I think he's he is an interesting topic. It's talked about on our website quite a bit on the Sigum 365 forums. But you look, he's he was as a redshirt freshman, asked to play a ton in 2022. Had a I would say for a redshirt freshman, pro football focus graded him very well. I think his his overall defensive grade was over 79. You might have that with you or in front of you. Um, coverage was strong. Are you were you able to see it? You have it on there. He, so he's he had two picks, he had four pass breakups, he had two fumble recoveries, and he was fourth on the team in tackles. Uh, yeah. As a like you mentioned in that 2022 season, I don't know what his grades were, but what I do know is he definitely passed the eye test. He looked like he was going to be a, a really big building block for this team, and then last year obviously was bad for everyone. Yeah, and I. I I believe at the end of his redshirt freshman year, he had a shoulder injury that he's playing through. And if you look at his PFF grades, as soon as that injury occurred, it, he started struggling. And you hate that. You want to say, oh, he shouldn't get hurt. Well, his reality is they're going to get hurt and they're going to deal with injuries, right? But his, his um, ability to understand what is going on within the defense cannot be overlooked. And right. last year, first game of the year, dislocates his elbow and just struggles. But I, I don't want to say because of that, I think there's a variety of reasons, but it did not help him. I mean, he had a massive brace on his elbow for the majority of the season. And you know that in most scenarios, if there's any depth at the safety positions, he's probably sitting out multiple games. But with Devin, he's on the field and playing. 
Um, and you look at a guy who we talk about Gary Patterson a lot. De- Gary Patterson absolutely loved Devin Lemire as a prospect, and we know what Gary would do with safeties. I think he's another example of a guy who was asked to play very early in his career, even as a red shirt. He was asked to play early. He's dealt with injuries, and we haven't seen exactly who Devin Lemire is. Talk about pass rush. If Devin Lemire can be in the best position possible for a safety in this scheme early in plays, and there is a pass rush, I think his turnover numbers are going to go up. His playmaking ability is going to go up. He's not having to chase guys over the field because that's not his strength. But what it's going to be a strength is where he's going to be on the football field at the time he's supposed to be there. Right. It's the IQ thing. It's it's he plays a lot faster than his athletic testing will tell you. Um, And a big part of that is putting himself in the right position to make those plays. And I agree with you. Uh, Having a guy like that on the field and being opportunistic is something this defense desperately needs. Uh, We're hoping to see that from Carl in year number two Uh, we haven't quite seen it from Devin Bobby yet but I do think there's some reasons for optimism there for them to take a big step in that direction yeah and Dave Aran has mentioned it what the strength of this defense will be will be their ability to play as a one unit all 11 doing their 111th and playing as a unit and Devin Lemire Devin Bobby Carl Williams cannot be their best without everybody else around them doing their best and so I think that's why you you had the positive a potential positive outlook for the entire defense is that you see the individual talent specifically at safety but what's causing them to have these issues I think there's some youthfulness I also think there's some other guys just couldn't get their job done uh, last year and now you're going to have them potentially playing with guys that are getting their job done and you need them all to come together so I I think there's high upside in this. They've recruited this position to a specific style of safety, and now they have to go out and execute it. Because you look back to that 2022 season and the safeties around Devin Lemire that were playing might not have necessarily matched with what they wanted to do, and they moved towards the smaller, faster, more to, more required to cover a little bit more, uh, mm-hmm. be smart early in plays, and let the pass rush get home. They weren't put in that position last year. Right. Christian Morgan really struggled that year uh, opposite Devin Lemire. So, um, yeah, I mean, he had moments again, but it was inconsistent. And Al Walcott was dealing with an injury all year. So a little bit of a, you know, a tough situation for him that season. But I think in general, this feels like a group that should be a lot better. And really, I think it's because of the environment around them being a lot better. I think they were kind of left out to dry, hung out to dry, to be honest. I mean, when you're asking your safeties to come downhill and tackle these big 12 running backs consistently, it's going to be tough. And and so with better linebacker play, with better defensive line play, I do think these safeties will hold up a lot better. Yep. Do your 111th. Everybody around do their 111th. It's going to make life easier. So with that, making lives easier, cornerbacks, playing on an island, if you're covering, it's helping the pass rush, right? It's giving the pass rush a little bit more time. I feel like that this particular group, you add in Lorando Johnson, I think it's kind of – it's not an overlooked piece by any means, but the depth that that adds, you have a guy like Tevin Williams who is who was hurt last year who, honestly, in my opinion, his injury probably allowed the emergence of Caden Jenkins because I think Tevin Williams would have played a lot more. And if you look at the snaps when he was healthy – and the snaps around the secondary and the cornerback cornerback room, those things were up and down depending on if he was playing or not. He just wasn't out there consistently. So I think they have five, four, possibly five guys that provide great depth at both sides. Um, and that's uh, obviously Caden Jenkins, Chatu Reed, who's going to be a senior. Uh, I mean, obviously he's uh, he's been around the program for a long time. I think you know what you're going to get with him. Lorando Johnson. Tevin Williams and a, and a fourth and a red or fifth and a red shirt freshman and LeVar Thornton, who we've heard a lot of great things about him and potentially could have played a lot more than he did last year, but they wanted to save his red shirt. Right. And I, I think the four names that you mentioned have been the four that have gotten most of the one and two reps so far mm-hmm. um, this off season. So I'm curious if LeVar can kind of, I don't know, make up some ground or get chances on the field early. And if he does maybe excel with those chances, but you know, the four guys up top, I mean, Caden Jenkins, you feel great about. I, I think that he's going to be um, your alpha at cornerback. You're going to try to have him on the field as much as you possibly can. Uh, he's a really good player. He's physical against the run, which mm-hmm. is an area that when you talk about a guy like Chateau Reed, um, 
he was really, Struggle. really struggling against the run and teams were running at him and just inability to uh, understand the angles they need to take to make tackles was a big problem. And it happened so many times where it's like, you're the last line of defense and it's not yeah. even a missed tackle. It's, it's a whiff. And so uh, that has to change on the outside. And I think Chateau is a physical player and he's an athletic player, um, but there's some inconsistencies there that I think he needs to definitely uh, get better at. And I, I think he can yeah. uh, mention that with Caden as well, being a young guy that really needs to just take a step forward consistency. That's it. Yeah. Just being more consistent. Uh, Tevin Williams, kind of similar boat. I really like Tevin's all around game. I think the thing with him is he's been hurt a lot. He's missed a lot of time. And I, I think mm -hmm. when you miss time during the season, sometimes it throws off your rhythm and uh, you get kind of lost in the shuffle. I feel like that's happened to him over the last two years at times. And so I think he's a guy who could maybe surprise people and end up being the, the guy that logs uh, the second most snaps at cornerback. Um, and then snacks, uh, Lorando Johnson coming back after transferring to Arkansas. Um, he comes back. He understands the scheme. He's big. He's physical. He's fast. I, I think everything about him is something that you definitely want in your two deep at cornerback. And again, he could end up being the starter, but I, and I really love his speed and length. And so because of that, he could end up being that guy opposite Caden Jenkins as well. But in general, you're going to be able to rotate these guys a lot and probably get pretty good play. I, I would say from the group. Yeah. And I want to go back to, to read for a second. And I, I think it's interesting because we know what we know about him as a player. And I think it was just a foregone conclusion to me in a lot of ways that he was, he wasn't going to be a starter. You bring in Lorando, you have Tevin Williams coming back. You have Caden obviously there. Like I feel like he was going to, someone was going to emerge over him, but he, they haven't till this point. He's still a starting corner going in, you know, less than two weeks until the, or less roughly a week now until the season opener, he's still kind of that guy. And so that's, it gives me hope that he is he has corrected some of those issues. Now we don't know that until we get out there. The lights are on and he misses a tackle, and they got the running back goes forty yards, and he just can't get off a block or whatever it is. But it gives me some hope and, and some faith in that room even more is that he did figure that out. Uh, Tevin Williams, whenever he was playing, he played a lot of snaps, but then he just four games, five games, and he didn't play the rest of the time. So right. there's, I think. Talk about with all the defense, there's so many unknowns, but the upside is there if these guys can be on the field and correct small issues. And I think the competition breeds that opportunity of who's going to rise to the top. Does Lorando Johnson come in and he pushes and pushes and pushes and then finally surpasses Chateau Reed? Or does LeVar Thornton climb up his way through the depth chart because he, he's getting on the field over Tevin Williams because Tevin can't stay healthy? There's – for the first time at that position, I feel like there's depth. Those guys can, can continue to compete, and maybe there's not a big drop-off from number – I would say Caden's going to be in his class of his own as long as he's healthy and he improves like you would want a sophomore to improve. But outside of that, like there's so many guys that there's not going to be much fall-off. Though on top of that, if you look back to the 2021 season, they played a lot more defensive backs because they can control the line of scrimmage. And if this defense can even somewhat – control the line of scrimmage without having a lot of guys in the box you might see three of these corners on the field at one time depending on the circumstances and that gives you that flexibility to have three of these guys maybe Lorando lines up in the slot he has nickelback experience he lines up in the slot is able to take some, take something in the way so overall I feel like this group the cornerback group has a lot of depth probably the most proven depth of all of the secondary at this stage I would agree with that. And also you're only talking about two positions that they have to fill. And so I think that yep. that bodes well also that you're not talking about having to fill three positions and then having to look further down the depth chart a little bit. But uh, yeah, I like the group that they have there. I think there's questions. I think there still should sure. be questions, but I love the length, the speed, and the athleticism that Kevin Curtis has kind of built up in this cornerback room. Um, I think he's done a very nice job on the recruiting trail. And so he's kind of built out this, this group with some nice depth and a lot of unique frames that I think really fit what Dave Aranda and Matthew Pallage have been looking for. Yeah. So if, if I asked you the X factor, all three positions, you can only name one guy of the, I guess, almost 17 that we have or 12 sorry 12 that we've talked about who is the x factor that you're you're looking at that you say if this guy has a good season 
if this guy can and break out because I think all of them to a certain extent need to break out. Who is the one guy that needs to have that to, for this defense, for this secondary to be its best? It's definitely Carl Williams. And the reason for that is because you got to look at this, this group and you got to see what's changed. You know, what, what is, what has changed for this group? And really it's the emergence of Carl Williams and his ability to play at multiple levels of the defense. I think that's the biggest thing, right? Cause you could say Kendrick Simpkins, but the thing of it is, if Kendrick Simpkins isn't playing well, Carl Williams can fill in that role. If yeah. the deep safeties aren't playing well, Carl Williams can fill in that role and help take some of the load off there. So I think his versatility, his ability to understand concepts at playing both levels of the defense, uh, his leadership, I think all of that and the fact that the staff has talked about him so much, you really want the staff to be right on that yeah. and, and that he really um, lives up to what they've been saying all off season. So he is definitely the X factor. He's the guy that can take this group from being, um, I think, Overall, looking at the Big 12, probably right in the middle of the pack, I would say, for total secondaries. And he could maybe move it up into the top five if everything hits right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go. You said you said you could say Kendrick Simpkins. Well, I'm going to say Kendrick Simpkins <laughs> because I think if he can if he can be the dude at star, that means you got full-time Carl Williams being a dude at safety. So, like, I think there's that balance of – you would almost want Kendrick to elevate his game to where, hey, I'm going to – there's I have some flaws in my game, but I'm going to have the ability to cover on third and long. But also if I need to, to drop down and stop the run on third and one, I can do that as well, whereas we're not having to rotate Carl in and out. So I think for the betterment of the defense, rather than kind of spreading Carl Williams all over the place, you say, Kendrick, you just be really good and you have a breakout senior season – and then we it allows us so much more flexibility in the back end. So I'm going to go that route. I understand where you're going with it because I think the MVP potentially um, the most valuable player is because with Carl Williams is because if you, Kendrick doesn't pan out, well he's going to go he's going to go take that spot. If if Devin Lemire gets injured, he's going to go and take that spot consistently. He's going to be the guy there all the time. Then they'll figure out star. So I think there's that versatility that Carl brings that he's the X factor. But also think if Kendrick can be the X factor and he becomes above average in all all facets of his game, then he's a the guy. I think that I think there's both ways to look at it. So I'm excited to see this group. I think the front seven has to do their job. I think it starts with the defensive line for this group to be its best. But overall, if that defensive line gives it, I think this group can be a very functional and formidable group, uh, considerably more so than last year. But I think in general, a good group in the Big 12. And they're going to get tested uh, because the quarterbacks in these offenses in the Big 12 are very, very good. So they're going to have opportunities to uh, show positive improvement and also opportunities to uh, potentially have issues. So I think we're going to find out relatively early that Colorado game really stands out as kind of yeah. that that test where you're really going to know, okay, what does the secondary look like when they're having to deal with five wide receiver sets at times? Um, I'm very curious to see how that all plays out, but I do think the talent has gotten better. I think guys have improved, and I think overall the development in the secondary has taken a nice step forward. All right, Baylor family, that's going to do it for this, today's episode of Inside Baylor Sports. We're finally wrapping up the entire preview of the Baylor football roster, offense, defense, inside of the ball. Um, this is the official daily podcast of Baylor Athletics. Thank you so much for listening. For Grayson Grudenhafer, I'm Colt Barber. Have a great weekend and sick and bears.